Welcome to episode 87 of the Epilogue Lady podcast. My name is Bente and I'm coming to you from Vesterål, northern Norway, where I live with my husband and three cats. You can find me on Instagram as Arctic Crafts, on Facebook and Etsy as Arctic Crafts by Bente, and on Ravelry as Arctic Crafts 65. There is also a group for this podcast on Ravelry, the Arctic Crafts podcast group. And we have a make long running, the Spooky Mal. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And there's a Ko-fi page where you can support me and the podcast. Links to everything below. And I have all three cats indoors today because of the weather. So hopefully everything is going to run smoothly anyway. Snape is rather skeptical because the water fountain is turned off. I had to turn it off before I started recording because we had to buy a new one. And this one is making a buzzing sound and I wasn't sure if that was going to be audible on the podcast. So I turned it off to be on the safe side. And uh, the old one stopped working because of the power cord it's uh, it's these things where you have this block and adapter that you put in the socket and then you attach it to the fountain with a cord and it stopped working and we had the same problem with the same kind of fountain before so we bought a different one and this one has a usb but it makes a noise and the old one didn't so the cats are skeptical because of the sound but they have started using it, all three of them. So hopefully, but I have to keep an eye on Snape because he is rather skeptical because it suddenly is silent. So um, he can still drink from it because there's water at the bottom of it. Uh, and um, I'm not sure why I started talking about um, the cat's new water fountain. This is the exciting things you're here for right uh, this is uh, being recorded and probably upload uploaded on a thursday i can't see any reason why i should wait until tomorrow to upload it because as long as it's earlier than usual i figured i could just upload it as soon as i'm done editing my youngest son is coming uh, late this uh, evening to stay with us for a few days and I don't want to record a podcast while he's here. I want to give him my full attention. So that's why I'm doing it a day early this time. And uh, when it comes to live stuff, nothing interesting happening apart from me being on, uh, on uh, doing a pop-up in a local uh, shopping center and it went so-so. I made a little more money than I would have on Etsy and but i was exhausted afterwards both because of all the people and all the noise and all the packing unpacking so sunday i was probably i was just vegetating i think that's the word on the couch i'm doing another uh, pop-up or rather a trunk show in the local yarn store later in November, as well as another Christmas market the last weekend of November. But at the moment I have some weeks off and next week I'm going to dye up the last of the Christmas colors and those will be launched November 1st. So that's it, I think. A little bit more about the Spooky Mal, I promised you that. Um, It runs until October 31st. So it's not too late. If you already done something that's harvest or Halloween themed, just go ahead and enter it. Uh, There's one thread for everything, both chat and FO pictures or works in progress and anything Halloween or harvest related. It can be the name of the colorway. It could be the pattern name or just fall autumn colors, Halloween colors. Just put it in there and I'll draw the prices November 1st. And November 1st 
the next megalong is starting, and that's the Gringe Mal. And that's everything green or selfish. Uh, because uh, everybody is knitting Christmas presents, or not everybody. I don't own, I Normally, if I give away knits for Christmas, it's something I already have done because I have a, a tub of shawls and another tub of socks that I just pick from to give us presents. Uh, I'm doing a Christmas present sweater this year and I'm going to show it to you when I show you my whips. So we can start about talking about what I'm wearing. I'm not sure if I ever wore this on the podcast before. It's been, it's a long time since I knit this. It's, you can probably tell, it's a Ranunculus by uh, Midori Hirosa. And the yarn is Life in the Long Grass Hinterland. And the colorway is a River Rock. And I bought the yarn uh, at a local yarn store in Brighton. That's called Yarn and Knitting, but the name of the shop is Yak. And uh, I love this sweater because the, the it's really sheepy yarn, but because it's a ranunculus, it's knit on larger needles. So it's kind of see-through, but it's not too warm. So I really like wearing this this time of year. So that's what I'm wearing. I'm also wearing hand knit socks as usual this time of year, but I don't bend that way. So you can't see them. So I just had to take a break to let one of the cats outside. Hopefully he doesn't want to come back in before I finished recording this. So we have an FO. You could see it in the background. It's been um, hibernating for some time and I decided to pick it up again because I figured out what to do with it. It's the May I Borrow This Please by Lorraine. Uh, let's see, Lorraine Waitman. The yarn is Hobby Winter Glow. And when I realized what I could do with this, I decided to finish it, so I finished it. Uh, I'm going to gift this for Christmas to somebody that really loves blue and purple. And that's all I'm going to say about it in case she watches this podcast. I don't know if she does, but in case she does. So this is a Christmas present and it's finished. So that's my only FO, and when it comes to whips, it's not that exciting, I'm afraid. Uh, you've seen most of these before. The first whip is a hoe. I'm doing socks for hubby in really crazy colors. Hopefully they fit him. This is, this started as a sock snake. And I'm in the process of doing the toe on the second sock. So they're almost done. So I think I'm going to finish the toe, toe today so he can have them. Uh, it's a 60 stitch cylinder. So I hopefully they fit. Uh, because they're too big for me because they're too long. And I don't know any women with this this long of a foot. So, uh, hopefully they fit. And then my second whip is in this bag by one of my subscribers, Anne Wilson. And in here I have something you've seen before, but I've done a little bit more work on it. It's one of my booth projects for the pop-up. It's my everyday slouchy beanie by Dragon Horn Designs, and this is for me. I already know it's for me because I knit one of these before, Everyday Slouchy Beanie, but it's with mohair, not alpaca, and it itches. There's something uh, with, about me and mohair 
that doesn't mix. So this is alpaca and it's really, really soft and warm because you have a double hem. So this is for me and I should work on it because before I know it, it's hat season. But I have, I have other hats I can wear until this is finished. So not a big deal. This is knit with um, Arctic Crafts, uh, Stracciatella, 100% uh, Merino fingering, and Moody Mauve Surrey Silk Cloud. And this is the leftovers from my Fade and Lace, Fade and Lacy. <laughs> I never, I never learned that name by Hohi Locatelli. So that's that. And my other booth project is in this bag by um, GB Russo's and it's a sock that I'm knitting with Glacial Lake, a Glacial Lake sock set. And I have this in the shop. I have uh, Glacial Lake on different bases as well as sock sets like this with Glacial Lake. And this is what the balls look like. I've dyed up three skeins of Glacial Lake on fine merino fingering for myself. Not sure what sweater to knit with them. Um, either I'm doing a colorwork sweater with a tonal in the colorwork, or I'm doing something like uh, No Frills or On the Beach by Isabel Kramer. I might do the On the Beach because I love that uh, pattern. I've knit the two or three, I think. Because when it's variegated and speckled like this, it doesn't work in a patterned sweater, I don't think. I did the Spectre by Hohi Locatelli in some yarn from uh, Rose Hill Yarns, and the pattern just disappeared. It's, it's a pretty sweater, but you can't tell that it's patterned until you get close up. So I don't want to knit a patterned sweater with a glacial lake. So probably doing an, an on the beach. If I do a no frills, I'm going to do it without the alpaca. Uh, I don't want to hold the glacial lake with anything uh, because I want to see what it looks like knit up in a sweater. So, um, and my last project is in this bag by the Tangle Skein CA. This was a custom bag she made for me because I really wanted a, a bag with this fabric and she did panels in a solid color and I think this is perfect. And it has handles so it's easy to carry around and a drawstring. In here I have the Christmas present uh, sweater I was talking about and I'm really getting far on it. I don't have any yarn bands in here because the rest of the yarn is somewhere else, but it's a Hobbies Friends, I think it's called, their own yarn brand. And it's a fine merino. And it's a size eight, year, eight years or 128 centimeters. And, it's, and that's Snape. It just wants to let you know he's here. And I'm on the decreases at the yoke. And this is uh, designed by Anita Bratteland. Sorry about that. You just have to uh, forgive him. Uh, it's by Anita Bratteland. And it's a house of yarn pattern. And it's called Melke Genseren, or the Milk Sweater. And the reason for that is that this pattern is from milk cartons. Yes, it is. So it's a, also a free pattern. And the girl that's having this is Hobby's second cousin, I think. And she's only six years old but she's tall for her age. And I figure, okay, so maybe it's too big when she gets it, but she can grow into it. So that's why I need it in an eight year old size. And 
the girl's grandmother helped me pick the pattern and the colors. So hopefully she's going to like this. And as you can tell, I, as I told you, I'm on the decreases. So hopefully I won't be working on this too long. But because it's a Christmas present and we're going to Svolvad where she lives, the first weekend of December, that's a long time away, but I want to finish this sweater so I can put it away, put it aside and start the sweater for myself. Again, probably the Glacial Lake one. Uh, I have another sweater quantity um, from the same yarn that I knit the Fjolla in, Permin Luna. And I'm showing you that yarn when I've started the sweater. I can't, I, I may, I'm not the yarn snob as such, but I'm only showing you hand dyed yarns when I get them in the mail. Uh, commercial yarns, I'll show you when I start the projects. I'm also waiting for a sweater quantity in Malabrigo. I came across Malabrigo yarns in a Norwegian web, web store, so I don't have to pay VAT and everything when it gets here. I pay VAT up front. And uh, I was surprised how budget friendly Malabrigo is. Uh, I know they have uh, launched a new sock yarn that's called Super Sock that's got nylon in it, but I didn't need that because I'm knitting a sweater. So I ordered three skeins. My size three skeins is enough, thankfully. Uh, some patterns it won't be probably, but I normally knit my sweaters with three quarter sleeves anyway. So I only ordered three skates. Hopefully I can figure out what to knit, uh, what to knit with it. And Snip, you can just shut up, go lie down somewhere and shut up. And now I have lipstick on my coffee cup. I almost never wear lipstick, so that annoys me. So that's, let's see, what more do I have to show you for whips? I just have to check my notes. I only have one more thing, and this is a true UFO because it's been lying around for, I think it's almost a year since I last worked on that this, but I decided to work on it and it was so much fun so I've done a lot. Uh, this is the Persian Dreams and I didn't put down the name of the designer but it's on the screen as always. Uh, and I have and now have 12 or 13 of these and I need 24, so I'm halfway. And uh, there's supposed to be three or four different colors on each, uh, what would you call these? Uh, there's six, six sides to them. Not sure what that's called in English. Not sure what it's called in Norwegian. I know octagon, pentagon. Never mind. So, uh, and I get this color effect by using um, color changing yarn from Hobby that I haven't written down the name of. I'm such a professional. I'll put it on the screen. And a uh, black acrylic. One of those jumbo balls and I'm um, it's all of its acrylic uh, I'm not sure if I want to do something about the back when it's finished but that I'm putting fleece or a flannel or an old bed sheet or something on the back when it's finished uh, I'm using a tip from uh, Coffee and Craft, I think it's called, Bernadette in Canada. Uh, instead of uh, binding off at the end, I'm leaving the stitches live with some scrap yarn. 
and then I can Kitchener them together instead of sewing them together when everything's finished. Now we can see him in the background. He thinks he sees something, probably. So that's entertaining. Now you, everybody is looking at him instead of me. It's the drawstring from the, the curtains. So no, now you're just looking at him, right? No, you're not looking at me anymore. Uh, anyways, he looks possessed. So that was the last of my whips and I think I'm going to work on uh, on the sweater for a hobby second cousin until it's finished and then I'm going to pick up one of the other whips. I haven't crocheted on my granny stripe uh, for over a week. I have, se I have several other whips of course but as normal, I only show you my active whips. I can't show you all my whips. That would be crazy. Uh, especially since I have lots and I haven't worked on. I only worked on these ones. My knitting mojo is coming back and that's a good thing. Uh, the problem is I have more of a cast on nitis, really. I want to cast on all the things. And when your knitting mojo isn't all there, it's not smart to cast on a lot of things because you know they're going to hang around and being half finished. So uh, I'm trying to pace myself when it comes to casting on new things. But now I have several sweater quantities that I want to cast on. I have more yarn coming in the mail. So I think I'm going to use the queue function on Ravelry for the first time and queue up the sweaters I want to knit so I can remember when I get the yarn because uh, my brain is like a sieve these days. Uh, I'm, I have a brain fog most days and when I do get my brain to function it's it's overflowing with uh, things that aren't important. So that's uh, that's me at the moment. I'm really looking forward to getting my son here. Uh, we have plans for um, tomorrow. Uh, here in Stockmagnes, it is the, they're calling it the birth birthplace of the Coastal Express because. The man that started the Coastal Express lived here and this was the first the place where the first Coastal Express left from. So they're calling it the, the birthplace of the Coastal Express. I've shown you the, the old ship that's encased in glass that's uh, downtown Stockmagnes. I've shown you that. Uh, I can put up a picture in case you haven't seen uh, my vlogs. And that ship is a museum, so you can walk around it and see what the, the Coastal Express looked like when it started, the interior of it. They also have the possibility of seeing the engine room. I think that's the most interesting part for my son, but I think you have to have a guide. You can't go in there by yourself, so hopefully uh, we can get somebody to accompany us to the engine room because I think that's the most interesting part for my son. I also promised him that we would have a piece of cake uh, in a local coffee shop that's run by a bakery so they have really really nice cakes and loads of different ones and I promised him we'd go there for a piece of cake afterwards to celebrate my um, birthday. That's it's almost a month ago, but he wasn't here for it, so I promised him a piece of cake. We're also going to have a D&D session, D&D Dungeons and Dragons, for those of you who don't know. Uh, me and Hobby is running a campaign. Hobby is the DM and is controlling one of the player characters. I have uh, the other player characters. Normally, parties are three or more people. But we only have, I only, we only do two. Uh, but we have NPCs or 
uh, I think it's short for uh, neutral player characters that join us from time to time. And I have made another character that I'm going to have. I'm going to try to run two characters and see how that goes. Um, and Alan has a guest character that I helped him make. So whenever he's here, Hobby sort of writes him into the campaign, wherever I am. I just arrived in the town the last time we played, so I'm going to run into Alan's character in that town and he can join me for an adventure. And because he prefers uh, fights, dungeon crawls, stuff like that, and the last few sessions there's been a lot of role play and not a lot of fighting, so Hobby is going to plan for an encounter. So Arlen gets to fight because that's his favorite part of Dungeons and Dragons. He thinks it's a bit boring when it's a lot of role playing and you have to talk to people to get things done. He prefers fighting. Anyways, I'm not sure if you're interested in Dungeons and Dragons, but it's a thing we do a lot of these days. And as I said, turns out it's possible to run a campaign just two people. And we don't know a lot of people, at least, that play Dungeons & Dragons. Um, both um, of the people we know that do Dungeons & Dragons have campaigns running where they don't have room for more players. So it's either just the two of us or not at all. So it's just the two of us. Uh, so that's... If you're interested in Dungeons & Dragons, let me know. Because then I could possibly do a Ventus bag of holding about Dungeons and Dragons, if there's anybody, if there's any interest in that. Um, there's a lot of uh and mm in my podcasts, uh, both because I sometimes have uh, trouble collecting my thoughts, and because, as I keep saying, English is my second language, so. These days I have to search for the words in Norwegian. So no wonder I'm struggling with my English from time to time. But doing this in Norwegian was never an option for me because most of my customers is abroad, are abroad. Case in point, second language. Uh, so I have, I decided if I was going to do a podcast, it had to be in English. Uh, I have more customers in Norway now. But the thing is, uh, only Norwegians understand Norwegian, more or less. Uh, but all Norwegians understand English. So, easy to uh, figure out. I had to do this in English. Uh, I have, the epilogue came early, this episode, because I haven't done show and tell yet. Um, I, I'm going to show you uh, some yarn I got in the mail, and this was really so much fun. Uh, one of the winners from the Arctic uh, Summer of Socks, her name is Elizabeth. Elizabeth Morgan, she's in the UK, and she decided uh, I needed a present. And I'm so, so thankful. It's so much fun to get happy mail, especially since the birthday box from Sue in Canada appears to have vanished on its way here. So, but I got happy mail and from England, and it's this beautiful skein. It's from Riverknits, a dyer that was known to me from the UK, but I didn't know they did this type of yarn. It's called Chimera, and I know you're thinking the same as me. Spin cycle. Uh, according to uh, Elizabeth, who talked to the dyer, it's not done in the same way as spin cycle dyed in the wool. They're using a different process to make this, but it looks the same as spin cycle. At least I think so. 
and it's let's see it's a third of the price more or less of spin cycle this is a 50 gram skein i ordered two skeins immediately after i got this in the mail because i loved it so much and because i want to do the stone crop by Andre andrea murray and i think it's so beautiful and when i saw this i thinking i can do the stone crop and it can look more or less like Andrea Maurice. Not the same colors, but with spin cycle as a contrast color. And I ordered two different colors, a light and dark in more or less the same colors, aqua, aqua and turquoise. And I think I'm going to do a stripe effect. Every other stripe or maybe fade. I'll, I'll see what I do. I, that yarn probably, hopefully, I get it before I record my next podcast. So I'm going to show it to you then. But the colorway on this is a sonnet and it's Ribbonit's Chimera. And of course, I'm going to uh, to uh, link to their shop down below. Uh, this is their card. And this, as I said, is from my, from a lovely lady called Elizabeth in the UK that won a prize in the Arctic Summer of Socks. So uh, I'll show you what I ordered next time. Uh, I'm waiting for stuff in the mail. Uh, I have ordered the latest installment of the Nitical Roll Club. And the Malabrigo I told you about, the Chimera from Revenitz. I got some birthday money from Hubby and I didn't know what to spend it on, but I'm spending it on yarn anyways uh, I and I have a tiny bit of shameless self-promotion uh, I have a new worsted Highland worsted in my shop it's 200 meters for a hundred grams it's non superwash Highland wool and I've dyed up two more colors uh, this is a new green that's called Arctic pine and then I have plum jam on, uh, this is a hundred percent Highland wool, non superwash. So that's that's the only thing going into the shop on Sunday. And somebody, one of my customers, uh, when I went to the shopping center, uh, told me that it would be nice if I did some undyed in the shop as well, in case people wanted uh, pure white or off-white natural colored and that's probably a good idea so let me know if that's something you would be interested in in the comments below if i should do undyed in my shop as well in most places i can do 20 50 and 100 in merino sock and poldale sock and i can throw in some undyed in custom remember if you order custom orders and you would like a white with it just let me know and I can throw in white with the hand dyed. Not a problem. So I'm going to test it, I think, at the Christmas market in Nixu. I'm going to take some undyed with me. I think one of the reasons I haven't thought about doing this before is that I can't afford to buy large amounts of undyed. Afford is one thing, uh, storage is another. So most cases I need what I have undyed for myself. So if I put undyed in the shop, it won't be unlimited amounts. I would just have to do an inventory and see how many can I, how many can I sell? How many do I need? And if it's a success, I'll just order a bit more undyed the next time. And the, the undyed will of course be much cheaper than the hand dyed because the only thing I'm doing with it is putting the tags on them. So they will be much cheaper than the hand dyed. I don't think I have any more to talk about. I'm not sure if I even have an epilogue. Because I keep thinking I could during the week I think I have to address that on Friday in the podcast and then I should write it down because as I said my brain is like a sieve these days. So I can't remember half of what I I think. And when I finished recording and edit it 
Uh, most of the time I think, oh, why did I talk about that? I need to talk about that the next time. And if it's something important, editing, editing Benta shows up. Um, that's not a big issue because if you're used to my mess of a podcast, you're not surprised when editing Benta shows up. I've been thinking about Vlogmas. I sort of want to do every day instead of once a week. But I'm not sure if I'm going to manage because I can have really bad days from time to time. And I might not want to pick up the camera. But I'm thinking if I can forgive myself and you can forgive me if some days it's just me opening my advents and nothing more, maybe some pictures, then I can do every day. And then some days will be longer if something's happening. But if I don't have the pressure of having to do loads of contents every day, I can manage doing Vlogmas every day. And maybe you prefer them short, so you know you can see uh, see the whole thing. I probably won't finish, the, finish it though, because both my boys are coming here for Christmas. So that's it. I've done... Uh, done a lot of talking about nothing as I usually do when I do these I'm not sure how long I've been going somewhere here it should be a counter hopefully I'm recording yes I'm recording that would be nice if I didn't record this so I'm going to edit this and then start cleaning the house and get everything re ready for my son he's not arriving until 11 30 p.m. So I have loads of time to do the final touches in my really messy apartment. But he's used to it. He knows his mother is a mess. So I'll see you in a little over two weeks. I might do a reel or something on Instagram when I'm launching the Christmas colors. I might do a short Bentes bag of holding for the Christmas colors. I'll let you know on Instagram when I do it, but it's November 1st. And it's not a lot, the Christmas colors, my old Christmas colors are already in the shop, in the Christmas section. The thing I'm launching November 1st is the uh, Christmas Eve cast on and two different colorways, one self-striping and one one uh, variegated so that's what's happening on november 1st and i'll see you november 1st or in two weeks i hope you have a really nice weekend i know i'm going to have one and then i'll see you bye bye <laughs>